Getting into the drone industry is a very exciting thing to do now, especially with all of the new and improved technology that has come out, bridging the gap for cost of entry. It is now enabling us small pilots to compete with even the big dogs. But being a solo pilot in the industry isn't necessarily all about the hardware and software that you own because without paying clients, you basically just have very expensive toys laying around. For over nine years of being in this industry, I've learned a lot about how to get paying clients no matter what your skill level is. So stay tuned to this video to learn about my top five tips on how to get paying clients as a commercial drone pilot. <laughs> Hey guys, Dylan Gorman here. Welcome back to a, another video. For those of you who don't know who I am, I've been a commercial pilot for over nine years with tons of experience. And in the last nine years of being in this industry, I've learned a lot about what it takes to be a successful pilot. None of what I've been able to build came overnight. It has taken me many years to perfect my knowledge and my approaches on how to get paying clients. And even still to this day, I'm learning a lot about the new and improved ways of, of doing things because as tons of new pilots join the industry every single year, it's gonna be more and more competitive to compete with all of the new people that are coming in with their cheap prices and their equipment. But in this video, I'm gonna focus on just five tips that I always bring to the table when negotiating and when getting new clients. So with that being said, let's jump into tip number one and that is market research. Part of being a pilot comes with the ability to sell yourself. For example, you could be the best FPV pilot in the world, but if you aren't able to sell yourself or prove your value, you might as well just call it a hobby. And part of selling yourself comes with understanding the industry that you're wanting to get into. Just because you go and buy a LiDAR or thermal sensor doesn't mean you're gonna get a flood of inquiries of people asking you to provide those services. Because, well, one, there are many different industries that can use LiDAR and thermal sensors, and two, there's several different ways to capture data with LiDAR and thermal sensors. And obviously there's more than just those two types of sensors. I'm just using those two as examples. What I suggest doing is really taking your time to dissect and understand what industry or market that you're gonna be getting yourself into to help better sell your services. What I suggest doing is really taking the time to understand and dissect the markets or industry that you're gonna be getting into, especially if you're going to invest into a sensor or a drone or whatever it is, as a pilot to understand how they're gonna utilize it. For example, in commercial construction, there are several different use cases for LiDAR. You can't just go and pitch and say, hey, I've got a LiDAR sensor, pay me to go capture LiDAR. Let's take a step back. There's several different ways to capture LiDAR for a property depending on what the final data output is gonna be and how they're going to analyze that data. To go a little bit further and explain what I mean by that, well, in commercial construction, for example, with LiDAR, there are several different kinds of use cases for that kind of data. Whether it's for general survey or earthworks, which relies on having very accurized data to measure volumes of dirt or whatever the material is to do cut and fill models, even all the way down to doing AEC work, which AEC stands for architecture, engineering, and construction, which LiDAR is used a lot in that world. There are several different applications within AEC of how LiDAR is being used. So again, you just need to understand and dissect what industry you're going into with the services and sensors that you're gonna be buying and using and understand how they're going to use it so that you can better pitch yourself to go and capture that data, analyze the data, and provide them a full report and analysis of it. But all of this to say is, you know, if you're going to go into an industry or if you're gonna go and invest into a certain kind of sensor to go and capture data that is gonna be flown on a drone, then you just need to understand the market that you're getting into and understand the services that are already being provided and how you can be of value to these companies to provide a, another way of capturing that kind of data. Coming in at tip number two is asking questions. Now, as simple as that sounds, believe it or not, this is the one thing that so many people do not do, is ask questions. Now, you may be asking me, what do you mean, Dylan? What do you mean by asking questions? Well, what I really mean by that is, as most professionals in this world think that they know what's best for the client, the one thing that they don't do is ask the client what they are looking for. I could be able to capture the best photos of somebody's property and I can tell them, hey, I can capture the best photos of your property with a drone, but maybe that's not really what they want. Maybe they wanted you to capture video and you're sitting here trying to tell them 
what they need when you didn't even ask them what they want. Now, asking questions is not as simple as just saying, hey, I can capture LiDAR of your building, let me capture LiDAR for you. No, what you really need to ask are, what are some of their problems? And in helping them find a solution, this is where you can use your knowledge at capturing the data, processing the data, and analyzing the data to help them solve those specific problems that they have. Usually the way that I go about asking these questions for whatever industry that I'm going into to use my services for is, well, part of it is tip number one of doing your market research. And with doing your market research, you'll be able to really understand that industry a little bit more in depth so that when you go and ask those questions, and this is the key here of when you're asking these questions, make sure you're asking it in a way where you're basically teeing yourself up for the easy answer of basically things that you know how to answer. And if it's something that you don't have an answer for, or at least a solution for the service that you're providing, tell them that you'll figure it out and you can do a little bit more research, but typically nine times out of 10, there's a, another way to solve the problem with not the direct way that they're thinking about it, but again, it's part of using that market research and understanding what it is that you're getting into alongside with using your knowledge um, of being a drone pilot with whatever service that you are providing. But basically to sum up tip number two of asking questions is just, again, ask the questions to understand what your client's needs are, what their current problems are, so that you can help navigate and find a simple solution to their problem, you're gonna be surprised at really how many clients that you can get by simply just asking questions. Tip number three is a pretty simple one. As either a new pilot or a pilot that's been around, having knowledge in an industry is great, but if you don't have any sample data in hand, then you're just doing yourself a very big disjustice. For example, I have three data sets that I know from the back of my hand that I use in my presentations of course, depending on who the client is and what the presentation's for, but I can basically guide them through it with my eyes closed. I know the data that well, and it has helped me close so many contracts just from that demo data. And the one reason why is because I know every little detail about that demo piece of data. I'm not just pulling a random project and trying to blindly explain it, even though you shouldn't necessarily be able to blindly explain it as you should know each project pretty well, but if there's one set or a few different sets of demo data that you always go to when demonstrating to a client of what your capabilities are, what your deliverables can be, and what kind of analysis that you can pull from the data, they're gonna be more impressed at that fact than for you to just pull a random project and show them, hey, we, this is what we can do. This one demo of a construction progress update site that I have used time and time again, and you've probably seen it in some of my past videos, but I know this data set so well, I can basically pull every little bit of information from whatever date we pull from because, well, this is my shining star. This one project, which it was a real project, but I still use it as my demo data, has so much value because there's so many different kinds of analytics that I have been able to pull from it. Obviously, in the grand scheme of things, this is a very small subset for progress update in the commercial real estate world, but apply this to several other industries as well. Whether you're a photographer and you have this one photo that you know all of the information about of what time of day you shot this and the best way to capture it because again, a client is coming to you for your knowledge and expertise on a specific item to help them get them from the point that they're at to the point that they wanna be at, which is the entire reason why they came to you or even why you came to them. And so to go back onto the point of my demo data of this construction progress update side is, well, a large majority of my clients are in the commercial real estate industry and a large amount of them also do have developments that go on, but this is also something that it's pretty new that they haven't seen before because, well, my industry has a bunch of old people in it, no offense, but as a way to help bridge the gap of the technology that they had before versus what we have now, me being able to show this data set and walk it through with them so effectively and seamlessly where they just get it on the spot, it is one of the reasons why you should know your data sets from the back of your hand with your eyes closed because pitching it to a client is gonna be the easiest thing that you do. And again, this also stems from tip number one and two of doing your market research, but also being able to ask the right questions when doing your demo. And it has been able to help me just get clients so much easier by just knowing the data. Now, I will say none of your demo data has to be from a paid project. You could even as simply go and create your own demo data set. And I would suggest filling it with as much 
possible data that you can put into it, whether it's a photogrammetry scan or a LiDAR scan and just running some sample processings on it or some sample data sets from it. I know I keep saying data, but at the end of the day, that's what clients mostly care about is the data that you're capturing. So if you're able to produce your own demo model from whether it's a paid project in the past or even just going and shooting something down the street from your house or you know pulling from another project, just be able to have something on hand that you know how to explain without stumbling upon it. Outside of having demo data to show, sometimes clients don't even really care about it. And this is where tip number four comes into play, and this is providing a free sample. Now, I'm gonna add a big asterisk to this because, well, it isn't always necessary to provide a free demo for a client. Again, it also depends on what's on the line. If it's a four, five, six, seven figure potential contract, then yeah, absolutely go do a free demo. But if it's someone that's just pulling your leg, then I would refrain from providing a free demo because, well, they probably aren't serious. But in my experience, nine times out of 10, when you do a free demo, that client is most likely gonna to wanna to work with you, whether on that project or even future projects. But most of the time, free demos have almost always paid off, and it is something that I learned five years ago, and I still use to this day, even with some of our big clients that we have. Sometimes you just need to show a demo to them of their own data. Now, I don't know what the actual term for this is, but psychologically, if you're able to show somebody something that they are already familiar with, such as a property manager, and the reason I'm using property manager as an example, well, this is the world that I deal in. I deal with a lot of property managers in so many different industries around the US where they know their property by heart. They know everything about it. But as soon as you're able to show them something that they have never seen before about their property or something that they have associated their knowledge to or their full understanding of. I don't know what it does in their mind, but for some reason it just a switch flips in their head and that light bulb goes off and they're like, wow, I never knew that that is something that you're able to capture. It essentially opens up the third eye in the middle of their forehead of getting more insight, getting more data on an asset or something that they have already been familiar with. And it kind of blows their mind to an extent because well, you're showing them something that they've really never seen before, never even really thought was possible. And to go further along of my examples, this actually happened last week to me. I've been here in Arizona for about two weeks and I had the pleasure of meeting a client in person, thank God, because the last two years have been rough with not being able to meet people in person. So after being able to meet my client in person, showing him some of the stuff that we're doing and some of the new technologies that we're utilizing, he asked me on the spot if we're able to use drones to do pavement assessment. And it's funny because I laughed and he kind of asked me, hey, what, why are you laughing? And I told him, well, yeah, that's actually something that we can provide. And so on the spot, what I did was I went and ran a sample data capture in terms of the process on how to capture the data for pavement analysis with drones. I sent it off to our team to do a full analysis of it. And within 48 hours, we had that data back to him. And again, it's like a switch went off in his head to we now have several contracts to go and provide pavement analysis with the use of drones, all because I provided a free sample data set of a property that he knew from the inside out. He told me that they haven't done anything in 20 years on the pavement for that property. And it wasn't until that I was able to show him that a pavement analysis from us and giving him a five year report of what they need to do on their pavement, it blew his mind. Because before it used to take a lot of time, a lot of money and just a lot of effort on so many different people's parts to do it to the point where now we have technology to help us. And so with all of that being said, a free demo just landed a six figure contract for us, all because I was able to show our client something that's familiar to them, but gave them a brand new perspective on it. Last but not least, tip number five, and that has to do with finding a mentor, collaborating. In a world full of so many experienced pilots and so many people in different industries, having a mentor or even collaborating with pilots in other companies or even just in your region can open up so many opportunities for just new discovery of the possibilities of what you can do as a pilot with whether it's service or data capture and even give you opportunities to get new clients. With how easy it is to connect with people on social media such as Instagram and LinkedIn and various other platforms, the easiest thing that you can do to yourself is expose yourself to new opportunities, new ways to learn about being a pilot in the industry. It's like that famous saying, if you build it, they will come. Well, 
unfortunately that's not really the case in the drone industry with a sea of new pilots coming and joining every single year it's so easy to get lost in the crowd and be a low-level pilot. Building relationships and connections can lead you down a very successful path, whether it's immediate or it's down the road. It's always good to be able to network and, and grow in the industry. It's not about what you can do by yourself, but it's about what you can do with others. And if you really want to progress your career as a drone pilot, it's not just about investing the time, money, and effort into the equipment and software and knowledge, but being able to build connections with pilots, with companies, and really just the industry overall will help further your career than anything else that you do. I promise you that. My biggest example of success in getting a client through a connection was literally three years ago. Before I sold my drone business three years ago, I was just another freelance pilot doing what I can, whatever came my way. And without the connection that I made three years ago, the opportunity of me being able to present my knowledge and my skill set in front of a commercial real estate company wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have gotten that client if it weren't for the connection that I built. I put myself out there and I made a friend and someone who I genuinely will always look up to because, well, they got me to where I am today. And we ended up going into business together a year and a half ago and, and sold our business exactly a year ago to the company that I'm working at now. So whether you're just putting yourself out there making a new connection, making a new friend, or learning from somebody else in the industry, I promise you, you're gonna learn a whole lot more that way than just taking some courses online or, or just watching some YouTube videos. Honestly, find somebody that you can relate yourself to or even just ask for help. As simple as it sounds, it's gonna be one of the most effective ways to generate potential opportunities to make money in this industry and get clients because you never know who's watching or who's listening. A simple referral of what you're able to do for somebody else can go a whole lot longer way than spending money on advertisements or doing cold calls. I promise you that. And that does it for my top five tips of getting clients. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a like. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down below. I'd love to have a conversation with you and just hear what your thoughts are on this. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I've got really cool videos coming in the future always stuff about the drone industry and always just trying to teach you guys something new from my experience. So with all that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.